technical conferences for bovine dairy and beef production. The technical conferences that are being developed in the sector are very important since they help fortify the knowledge regarding the different types of cattle practices that can be established. In today's program, technical conferences for bovine dairy and beef production, we get to understand how important it is to develop these in order to improve productivity at the different cattle ranches across the country. Here we are at the culmination of the Latin American Brangus Conference, the first conference that is being developed in Colombia and across Latin America, where the response from the public has been very good, and the themes as well as feedback given to cattle owners have been very advantageous. I just wanted to make a toast and take advantage of the fact that we all have a glass of wine and hoping this is a very good, advantageous and happy stay for all. Today we're going to initiate the second chapter of the Latin American Brangos Conference. These Latin American Brangos conferences were, let's say, a dream from a long time ago, promoted specially by Argentina. At Medellin's CES University, a panel discussion took place where several delegates from different countries participated. Argentina. The central region has a mild climate, and the breeds are predominantly Angus in first place and Hereford in second place. In the subtropical region, the predominant breeds are the Brangus and the Bradford. Mexico. The bovine population in Mexico is estimated to be at around 33 million heads. Out of those 33 million, Approximately nine will be sacrificed for human consumption. Panama. Panama's soil, generally speaking, is not good for consumption. They're acidic, lands that must be whitewashed, in other words, supplied with lime once or twice a year so that they may function properly. Brazil. The Rio Grande del Sur and the different areas of Brazil is a region of a milder climate where the pasture spread into a natural field, as though it were Argentina's or Uruguay's Pampa region. Paraguay. We believed that we were in condition to certify beef having enough volume, which is important. At the conference, protocols were presented within the conversation about how to access high-value markets with a Latin America Brangus breed. Let's say, without this being excess fat in the animal, nor this a high-end animal. Remember that the fat in the muscle is the last thing deposited, achieved for the final weight. That is to say, the heaviest weight with the most fat. My name is Horacio Avila. I'm a meat technician and a member of the meat committee for the Brangos Association of Argentina and I'm at these conferences or technical workshops in the Colombian Association in order to register the certification of the Latin American Angus. A process that basically has three critical points we have to work on, which is the certification from the field, that is to say certification of the calf, the industrial processes, and the critical points in the industrial processes, the maturation of beef, and lastly, the presentation itself. Something we're also witnessing at the conference is the variability in the Brangus' composition, a tool for the tropics. An angular variability in the Brangus' genetics, and which somehow raises a series of conditions that we may think are important for all the countries that have Brangus to attend to. Because there is success in the positioning of the breed, both in local markets as well as in competition with other breeds. 
This talk that was set at the installations of SES University in Medellin was a good one. In my position was about trying to communicate the experience we have acquired in Argentina regarding our handling of the varieties within the Brangus breed, as well as about some technical innovations and discoveries and of new technologies in terms of Angus and Brahman gene inheritance and offspring. En la progenie, que nos han creado... which has created an uproar amongst breeders, because science is giving us new parameters to reconsider. And what before seemed very easy and very clear, today we discover has more variation than we thought. <laughs> We made the trip towards Cauca Viejo with the international delegation, and that's where we had the Brangus technical conferences. What did we basically want from this? For the international delegations and all their technicians to meet according to subjects such as registration, genetics, and association. All these areas should have the same language, and so we made certain demands with Mexico, Panama, as well as with Argentina, to try to standardize concepts. What do we want to achieve? To make sure the breed is understood in one language at a global level. We were analyzing, for example, the record books of each association, and what we found is that we call things from the same category different names. So basically, we're saying the same thing. What came up yesterday is that that difference isn't even a practical difference, but one having to do with the difference of names. So the line of work we'll take regarding registrations is to see how each plan of registration and each association fares, to place all of that into a conversion table and emit a registration certificate, a third certificate from outside, and for it to be approvable by any of the associations, but still translates my place of origin, what my location is, and what it would be like in the country of destination. And so this way, we would all be talking the same language, a way for no country to have to change their breeding plans, nor all the work they've undertaken, but there will be one common language. I was asked about the advantages. What is the purpose of using these breeds when there are so many? They're all good. Not one is better than the other, but they do have different characteristics to exploit, particularly the Brangus breed, an excellent maternal breed that originated from Angus, a breed of high fertility and precocity. So, beyond the issue of meat, what the cattle rancher has to measure is a discussion we're always having in Colombia. Many ranchers know perfectly well how much their calves weigh, their daily gain, but they don't know how much they produce per hectare. Some things are not evaluated. How many kilos per hectare are produced and at what cost? This is the only way to know the profitability of a cattle production. The technical visits that took place in the different farms wanted to expose the results they each had obtained. In addition, many of the attendants were able to ask questions and clear doubts. Bajo Grande, Bajo Grande made an amazing presentation of their results, of the errors they've made just like any other company. That is very important for farms when they open their doors, and I stress this, they should show both the good things and the bad things. These breeds also offer a tolerance to drought, which is important because of our summers. We were looking at all the toba cattle over at Manantiales. The percentages of the different crosses participated with the locals, cleared any doubts, Countries intervened according to any doubts they had, and that's very important, very enriching, because sometimes you don't have the opportunity to consult with someone when you see a cross, and to listen to someone's opinion and then be able to say, hey, please help me solve this issue. 
Productivity is about compromise, a compromise to strategically use the advantages the Brangus breed has in production and to do it within a context where all aspects regarding the animal's care are managed. Starting with the social responsibility we have with our workers and with the country. I think this convocation has been excellent. I think we've had quality presenters, generous cattle breeders that have been able to say, look, I made a mistake. Please don't do this because I've already been through it. This is the kind of kindness you find in these types of events. Close to 150 people, both foreigners and locals, participated in this event and enjoyed one week of experiences, feedback, and the unification of concepts that reached the goals set out by the AL Brangus. We've seen how the technical conferences took place at the different cattle farms that produce meat. Now we would like to invite you to come and see the academic encounters that took place in the milk industry, which had, as its big closing, an exhibition fair. There are some people that are mixing the breeds a lot. I was just saying this to a colleague I came in with, that there are people with different types of cattle, like Jersey. I have a neighbor that has yellow, red, Jersey, Holstein, and mixed and spotted cattle. He has a lot, too much mixture. And he says that's what's going to work. I don't know. I'm already very committed to my children, and I absolutely love Holstein cattle. I love it, since I can say that it's giving a lot of food for me and my family. Antioquia is the first producer of milk in the country, and this northern zone produces 70% of the three and a half million liters produced daily in the department of Antioquia. It's an area that is highly specialized in production. It basically produces with Holstein cattle with high genetic potential. The northern part of Antioquia is divided into two areas, the plateau, which consists of the Santa Rosa de Osos, San Pedro de los Milagros, San Jose de la Montaña, Don Matias, Entre Rios, Belmira, Carolina del Príncipe, Gómez Plata, Yarumal, Angostura, and Ituango municipalities. The principal activities in the region are pig farming, potato, bean, corn, plantain, sugarcane, and coffee production and milk production. It is an area like many others in the country. We have low productivity and low competition in the sector, basically represented in the high cost of the inputs used, which are needed to improve the grass and the cattle's diet. Taking into account all these issues, the guilds of the sectors decided to carry out an academic and commercial event in order to potentialize and train the cattle ranchers of such an important region. The events we're carrying out today at Expo Leche in terms of updating the academic aspect, which is very important, because we can bring to all the producers subjects of interest that will allow them to improve the quality of their product, as well as the activities developed at their farms. Today, one of the most important regions in the country in terms of milk production is northern Antioquia. Due to some specific conditions, Bogota savanna, located in the Cundinamarca Boyacá Plateau, caused by the winter of two years ago, that region, unfortunately, has lost some of its impulse regarding milk production. That has made northern Antioquia into the most important cold-weather milking region, one obviously based on the Holstein breed.
In San Pedro de los Milagros, we have a municipality that mostly lives on the production of milk. We're talking about a municipality that is producing around 800 to 900,000 liters daily. The fairs began many years ago. Saying 1912 or 1914 perhaps would be too much, yet the fairs began in a simple way. When I had a very good animal, what did I have to do? I would leave mass on Sunday and I would tell my friends and neighbors, I have an amazing cow. And then I would take them home, kill a chicken, make a sancocho, and then have some aguardiente in order to show them my amazing cow. This went on in such a way that then the neighbor felt obliged to come and tell me, you have to come and see this horse I have. This was like a kind of pilgrimage, as some people called it, so that folks would come visit the farm and see the quality of the cattle. That obviously improved the price and business was better. Then someone came up with an idea and said, why don't we get together and take the cows to the town square? And that's probably why, when we have an animal we want to sell, economic needs, or an amazing animal we wanted to show, we would take it to the town fair, which was usually held once a month. When organizing an event of this nature, there is a technical committee, which is what assures the public's faith. It is made up of the president of the association, the commissioner, as well as by a representative of those that are participating. Within the committee, there is an important job, that of the commissioner, because it's the commissioner who guarantees the public's faith, and also that the animal on the floor does in fact match its identity, date of birth, and that it really is registered to its respective association. When starting an exhibition, what is it that we do? We work with the animal's registration, we're sent a photocopy, and on it we have all the animal's information, a type of identity card with a photograph of the animal's right side. With the Holstein breed, we can easily say that all cows have a different identity according to the number and the color of their spots. Right now, on the floor, we can see that no cow is exactly like the other in its coloring and spots. Next, we will meet one of the most representative figures in the industry and one who will choose, according to his criteria, the best specimens of the exhibition. My name is Pat Conroy. Uh, it's the first time I've judged in Columbia, uh, but I've been here many other times at other shows, Agro Expo, uh, for maybe the last 10 years. In the, uh, in the heifers, it's, it's very similar to what you're going to look for in cows. Uh, for me, I like uh, uh, heifers that got width to their rump, width all the way through. When you get in front of them, they got some power and strength to their front end, and they got some drape and openness to their rib. And, uh, and it's also very important, the feet and legs. Uh, good set to the leg, how the animal walks from behind. And then when you get to the cows, the udder is very important. Uh, you want otter that's attached very well, both fore and rear. Good teat placement, as well as quality to the udder. That meaning the venation and the sug snugness to that udder, given the number of calves. The exhibition fairs are carried out through the following categories. Miners Championship, Calves, Intermediate Youth, and finally, the adult championship. Each category chooses a champion and a reserve champion in order to finally choose the great champion and the great reserve champion of the whole fair. My job is to take care of the exhibition cattle at the Juanchita Investment Farm, Casablanca Hacienda. 
I've been working at the farm for 12 years preparing the animals for exhibition. We have decided to show the animals, to show the cattle, in order to show it off so that people don't end up losing their farms or livestock. There are good specimens here, good cattle. The Manuela Farms cattle are beautiful. The cattle from the two R's are also very beautiful. I mean, there are some good specimens here. In San Pedro and almost everywhere else, we have good genetics and yet we lack administration. There are people dedicated to managing their cattle and they advance it as much as they can because everything in life is about how much love and care you put into things. That produces. These exhibition fairs are events that serve to bring together the people who work and struggle each day to improve the region's livestock industry. I decided to come to the milk fair because I really like the industry. It has to do with what I study and on what I plan to develop with my work. A friend of mine once told me that one of the noblest activities is that of milking. A black and white cow eating green grass under a blue sky, producing white milk. The fact that we come in with these animals, bring them into the showroom, share with them, allows for a close bond between the animal and its handler, its milker, its owner. This is also a business, a business of living beings, one in which we're bringing together the grass, a living being, the bovine animal, a living being, which leads us to be important both at a milk production level as well as on a personal level as livestock farmers. We live for the cows and we are what we are because of the cows.